Hi folks. Uh, today I'm going to run through some basic setup in DCS using verbal equipment. Um, I see online a few people having problems sussing this out, so I'm just going to run through what I normally do myself. Um, so anyway, uh, if you click on options, then go to controls, pick the aircraft you're interested in. Today I'm going to be showing you the A10C because it's got uh, dual engines and you've got a dual axis throttle there. Um, and what I'll do is I'll run through the basic config and setup. Now, first thing, uh, you re scroll at the side here, goes up and down the complete list. This drop down here shows you uh, which ones you're interested in. So you can basically filter out the individual subcategories that you just want to look at if you just want to show them alone. Um, and the all shows everything. The search is very handy. Um, it's very good that they put it in. I did request this of DCS, I don't know, about five, six years ago and they eventually got around to doing it. So the search thing means you can type something in, um, like, I don't know, thrust maybe? No. No, like a throttle, okay. Uh, and that'll basically filter out and show you what you might be interested in. Just go back to all again. Right, okay, so uh, you have your devices listed here. So you get keyboard for me, MF MFG, MFG crosswind pedals, my verbal stick and my verbal throttle. And if you drag down here, you'll see it's already bound out of the box, uh, a, a different amount of buttons and stuff. Um, I tend not to use any of those because I just tend to wipe them. But if you are going to use them, then just leave them as is. Over here at the bottom, we have our little scroll so if you have an absolute load of devices you can scroll across to see them all here so that's what that's for if you're having problems finding things so let's run through and show you how i set up the axes now i use if you've seen any of my other videos i use joystick remnant a lot because it's extremely good um what i tend to do is click in each of these categories and click clear category and it flushes all the button bindings that are in there and gives you new button bindings and then i use button to keyboard press to actually send commands and do things. So I'm basically looking at what these keyboard this keyboard column does and then mapping it in joystick gremlin to whatever button I want. So that's another story. So let's look at how you set up your axes. So just go and look up the axes. And you can see yourself that a lot of these are already set up, but look at this. Do I really want the MFG pedal joy axis y to do roll on my aircraft mm, no i'm not out of the box this fills these up with clearly the dumbest stuff imaginable so the first thing i do is click on this column clear category and i go through and flush them all because they're mostly they're going to be screwed up there we go now if you're wondering what this other column to the side here i have a um what do you call it? Because I use Joystick Gremlin, you have VJoy installed, so it'll already have stuff here, but that's not an issue. Don't worry about that. Right, so let's start off. Uh, I'm going to go with my stick first. I'm going to do pitch. So I select my VPC stick in that column. Double click on this particular one, which is pitch. And then I push my stick forward and backward, and that's the Y axis. Hit OK. And now if I move the stick back and forward, you can actually see it's doing stuff. Next, I'm going to do the roll on the stick. Double click again, move the stick to the left, move the stick to the right. And now I've got that one bound. Okay, so that's two down. Next up, rudder. So I'm going to use some MFG crosswinds. Just double click and move the pedals left and right. That's actually just pushing, you know, the, the rudder as you would. Uh, then I'm going to do wheel brakes. So I'm going to try to hold the pedal steady. And then just tap the wheel brake forward. And you see that's done. And do the, the right. Now, this... As you can see yourself, it's actually registering a lot of movement and we actually don't want that. So this is the first thing I want to show you. You tend to have to do this for 
um, things like toe brakes and for throttles for whatever reason I don't know why it doesn't but this is what you need to do so just select this go axis tune go slider I think this needs to be inverted there we go I'll do the same on the other one oops axis tune So that is the brake fully off me not pressing on the uh, brake toe pedal and that's me with it fully on. Okay, now let's go deal with the throttle. We'll slide over, there's the throttle column. And what I've done is I've unlocked both uh, the, the throttle handles so I've removed the wee bar across so as I can move them freely and independently. So I'm going to grab the left throttle, I'm going to double click on this. And just move it forward and backward from zero to 100% and then back to zero again. Hit OK. To do the right, same thing, forward, all the way back. And yet again, it's treating it like an axis that has a dead zone and it's doing stupid stuff. So axis tune again, slider, invert. Axis tune, slider, invert. And now, that's at a hundred percent, that's at zero percent, and it's actually doing what it's supposed to do. So there is the basic setup. Now you can see when I'm moving moving these axes here, the joy X and joy Y here, they are actually axes that do have a dead zone in the center. I don't know why DCS does this, but it, it seems to assume that the throttle has you know, it's the same type. It has a um, a dead zone in the middle, and that's why you have to do that invert and um, slider. And you have to do that for the, the toe brakes. The only other thing I've got to bind while I'm here is the zoom view, which I use the little scroll wheel that is on the um, right throttle handle. So I'll just double click on that. And for that one there, same deal as before. So that'll be like the normal zoom position with the, you know the detent on, so it's halfway. That's all the way forward, like zoomed right in, and then that's zoomed fully out. So that's it. That's how you set up your axes on your um, your verbal kit on DCS, and it is a bit of a bugger because they all have the same problem. Every single aircraft will need to be bound the same way. I have to I have to fiddle with the the throttle left and right, and also the toe brakes. I have to to do that little thing where you're clicking the invert and slider. I don't know why out of the box it isn't like that because it shouldn't be that hard for DCS to handle that. You should know what they're doing. Anywho, I hope this helps.